the depth, length, breadth, and height of the love of Christ? No, I couldn't find. The love of God cannot just be described. It has to be experienced. For we have experienced the love, and so we worship. Hello there, you once more welcome to the Glory Realm Devotion Moment. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God has been faithful. He's been so good to us. I don't know what you've been going through, but I'm very confident that something beautiful is happening right now. I know that there's a supernatural turnaround where if certain things have not fallen in place for you, I just want you to believe by faith and just trust God that they are going to work out for your good. For all things work together for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. That's what the word of God in Romans chapter number 8 verse 28 says. So if you love him, get ready, you're about to celebrate whatever seems kind of awful is about to turn to an awesome miracle. God is going to do great and awesome things and it will be evident that his hand is mighty upon us. Hallelujah. We've been studying the gospel book of John and we are presently in verse, I mean chapter number 17 and it's been amazing. Jesus praying to the Father, revealing his heart for the disciples, his children that is leaving behind and that is very much more very very applicable to you and I because he didn't kind of like you know take us out of the whole thing he prayed for them that were with him and prayed for many of us that are to follow afterwards and so as you read and follow on remember he's talking about you too yesterday we look at the fact that Jesus prayed to the father asking the father to sanctify us through his word and then went on to talk about the fact that we are not in the world and he wasn't praying that the Father will take us out of the world, but that we will not be of the world and that we will live and conquer and reign and bring him glory in the world. And today we are continuing on that same passage and looking at what Jesus, you know, uh, was talking about in verse number eight, 18, he made mention that just the way the Father sent him into the world, that's the way he's sending his disciples, you know, out in the world. And so if Jesus succeeded, we are supposed to succeed because he did it and made it easy for us. When he died on the cross, he gave us victory. And we have access to the presence, the glory of God, the power of God. And the precious Holy Spirit he gave to us makes the assignment, you know, that much more easier than he should have been. And so in verse number 19, the word of God says, and so for their sake, and on their behalf, I sanctify, dedicate, consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified, dedicated, consecrated, made holy in truth. So, you see, Jesus, that's why he said, just as you sent me, I'm sending them, all right? So, he said, for our sake, he sanctified himself, he consecrated himself, he dedicated himself. See, beloved, there's a lot to live for. It is for our sake he did all that he did. Now, what is he saying? It is an example to tell each one of us that, look, you can live the victorious life. Keep speaking about, you know, we are sinners saved by grace. No, you're not a sinner. Once you've given your life to Jesus, you're a child of God. And he's given you his precious Holy Spirit. And stop speaking negatively about what he has done. What he has done, has given us so much advantage. And so we do not claim that, oh, you know, and I'm, I'm not perfect, I'm a sinner, and all of those negative things that gives us the idea that it is okay to live, you know, we can live like, you know, like people who cannot measure up. He said, I sanctify myself because of them, dedicated myself. Why can't you do the same? And you know, there are a lot of people looking at us. There are a lot of people in the world 
who are contemplating whether they can serve God. And we should model the kind of life that he lived and that we make them see that it is possible if only they too will give their lives to Jesus and sanctify themselves. Anyone who refuses to sanctify, sanctify means to be set apart for sacred use. Anyone who refuses to set him or herself apart for sacred use definitely cannot live the victorious Christian life. To be a child of God is a deliberate decision. It's not something that happened by accident. You have to make a conscious effort. Jesus said, I did, and I succeeded, and I want them to do the same. And then in verse number 20, he says, Neither for these alone do I pray. It is not for thee, for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all those who will ever come to believe in, trust in, cling to, rely on me through their word and teaching. Amazing. So Jesus wasn't just praying for the disciples, the 12 of them, now 11 because Judas had gone out, that were with him. He was praying from you and I. He was praying for as many that will believe the gospel through the disciples and many, many more to come. So he prayed for you. He had you in mind in 2018, 2019, and years to come. He had you in mind. Now look at that. Verse number 21 says that they all may be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. And so this is so huge. The way we live, we show the world and we make the world see that Jesus was sent by the Father or not. So your own role, you living for him is so important to the Lord. You see, he has the power to make everybody save, but he chooses, he chose to respect our will, our personal decision. And that's the reason why also he has the boldness and the right to judge you. Because if, he, if it were just to make everybody be saved, he can do that. But he left you to make your choice because in the beginning he made you like himself. He didn't make robots. He made people with, you know, their own will. They make decisions. He expects you to be able to make the most of your life. And so that's why we have to live for him. That's why we have to separate ourselves and let the world see that we were created in his image. We are recreated in Christ. All right? So the world can see that this, this kingdom life is possible. In verse number 22 and 20, Okay, let's see, verse 22 says, I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. He has given us the glory, the glory which the Father gave to him. He is giving us, not he will give himself, giving them. So there are no excuses. We are inexcusable. If Jesus succeeded with it, we should succeed, beloved. Give your life to Jesus and live for him and the world will see the glory of God made manifest. Thank you for being part of today's broadcast. I'm Ego Louis Yegbibu. See you tomorrow by the grace of God.